What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it has been a long time since I have made a video, but God has just been molding me and shaping me and just taking me through a season in my life where um, I just was really focused, you know, on my family. I was really focused on work and that kind of led me into making this video. Now, this video is called Getting Back on Track and I want to first go through the reasons why we get off track and then we're going to go through how to get yourself back on track. So reason number one that we get off track is we get focused on work or a busy schedule. I know for me personally, I've been super focused on work. I got a new job and it's been going awesome. Don't get me wrong, but it has completely taken my time and attention. It's kind of consumed me a little bit to where... That's been my biggest priority. My biggest focus has been my job. Now, there's nothing wrong with being career oriented and goal focused and, you know, exceeding in the workplace. There's nothing wrong with that. The Bible says that the man who does not work does not eat. But it also says do not store up treasures on earth where moth and vermin will destroy, but store up your treasures in heaven. So we always have to be mindful of storing up those treasures in heaven. And although we do have to work, you know, we have to provide for our families, we have to provide for ourselves, we have to buy food and et cetera, et cetera. We also must focus on storing up treasures in heaven. And we can't take our eyes off of our main mission here on earth, which is serving the Lord and spreading the gospel. Reason number two we get off track is we get engulfed in hobbies or relationships or pleasures of the world, right? And again, nothing wrong with having hobbies and relationships and you know having enjoyment in life. But when it's too much, too excessive, and it takes priority over your relationship with God, and it takes your love away from God and put your love into these things more than your love for God, that's where we start to drift, right? And I was at church this morning and we we're going over 1 John 2, uh, specifically verses 15 and 16, which says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. You know, when we went over that this morning in church, that just hit me hard. I was like, ah, like I do love things in the world, you know, and I've been so focused on work and I've been so focused on providing. And when I'm not at work, you know, I just really want to relax and I want to chill out and I want to hang out and I'm just, I'm exhausted, you know, and I just, I've been giving my time and attention and my affections and my love into all these things of the world that I've taken my eyes off of God. You know, and it's not that I stopped loving God. And it's not to say that you stopped loving God, but you stopped being in love with him, right? And I know that is true in my own life where there's been times where like, I love God, right? I'm not, I'm not going out and sinning and drinking and doing all these bad things and falling into temptation. I'm not doing that, but I'm just coasting, right? I'm just coasting. I'm just living life, paying bills, you know, hanging out, doing fun stuff, and I'm not really spending time in the word or praying or building my relationship with God. And that starts to go on the back burner. And reason number three is that we start to focus on negative circumstances, right? Much like Peter, when he was walking on the water with Jesus, and he starts to look at the waves. He starts to see the chaos and the destruction and like the negative circumstances that are coming towards him. He takes his eyes off Jesus and he starts to sink, right? The same thing happens in our life. When we take our eyes off of Jesus, we start to sink. There's nothing inherently wrong with working or having hobbies or relationships or goals or, you know, having fun in life. There's nothing wrong with these things. The issue comes when we start to drift and the devil will use these things to get us to drift just a little bit, right? And then a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more until finally we've drifted so far that we start falling into temptation, right? We start falling into idolatry. We stop having that love for Jesus, and we start having that love for the world. And that's what causes all the issues in our life. That's what brings despair into our life, right? And I know for me personally, what happens in my own life is it's like when Jesus talks about the well, right? And how you're you're drinking from the well of the earth and you're not drinking from the well of him, right? And that, that well of the earth, that water of the earth can never truly satisfy and only the water that comes from him can really satisfy. That's what I feel like in my own life, right? I'll just drift slowly, drift slowly, drift slowly, and so I'm so miserable and I don't know what it is. I'm just like not having any fun, right? No hobbies, no entertainment, nothing can satisfy. And then I realize I'm like, man, it's my relationship with God, right? That's why I'm not happy. I'm not close to him. 
I'm not having that fellowship with him. I'm not serving him. I'm not doing what he's called me to do. As, an, as a Christian, I cannot live my life that way any longer and be happy. Now, how do we get back on track? So the first step to get back on track is simply confessing, right? Confessing to the Lord that you are off track, saying, God, I'm sorry, right? I know I haven't been pursuing you. Sometimes I struggle to even love you. I don't have the desire to read. I don't have the desire to spend time with you in prayer. I don't have the desire to fellowship with other people. I don't want to go to church, right? Sometimes maybe I don't want to follow your commands. I don't want to do what you're telling me to do. I'm struggling to even love you right now. I need help even loving you. I need help wanting to even pursue you because I don't feel like pursuing you. I don't feel like having a relationship with you. And I need that. I need you to help me to have that desire in my life again. Step two in getting back on track is to repent, right? And confession alone is not enough. Confession is not going to get you back on track. Simply telling God what, where you're going wrong is not going to get you back on track, right? You must take action. That's what repentance is. It's turning from one thing into another, right? Choosing not to go in this direction of your life, but choosing to redirect and go in a different direction with your life. So Hebrews 12, one says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So think about getting ready to run a race, right? And you have all these weights on you that are gonna slow you down. You're not gonna run the race well. Right? So we need to look at our lives and see what are those weights in our own lives that are getting in the way of us running the race, right? Running that Christian walk well, whether it be hobbies, right? Distractions, pleasures, work, relationships, sin, right? Whatever's going on in our life, we need to remove those things that are getting in the way of us having a relationship with Jesus because we are not going to be able to run that race with all these weights tying us down. You know, the Bible says that wherever your treasure is, there your heart is also. So wherever you're storing treasure away, right, that's where your heart's going to be. Whatever your desires are upon that aren't of God, that's where your life is headed towards, right? That's what you're going to pursue more than anything. Whatever you desire above God, that's where your heart's going to be. In Matthew 13, 22, it says, As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. And you know, we can hear the word, but then the deceitfulness of the world comes in, right? Those riches of the world, those pleasures, those distractions, they come in and they just, they choke up the word, right? They choke us up and they take our eyes off of the word, which stops us from bearing fruit in our own lives. Now, what is going to happen when we remove those weights in our life? We remove those things that are holding us back in our relationship from Jesus. So let's take a look at Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2, which says, Let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. So when we remove the weights in our life, it allows us to fix our eyes on Jesus. And when we fix our eyes on Jesus, it allows him to speak to us, right? It allows him to convict us. It allows him to teach us. And ultimately, it allows him to lead us in our lives. You know, when you were led by Jesus, he will not lead you to temptation. He will lead you into the best plan for your life. And as a result, you will have the most peace, the most joy, the most satisfaction, and the most comfort knowing that you are walking in accordance with his will. You know, so it's that simple. Number one, confess, right? Let God know what's going on. Tell him you're sorry. Tell him you want to get back on track. Tell him you need help, right? Number two, repent. Look at all those weights in your life, those things that are taking priority in your heart above Jesus and remove those weights, right? I guarantee you, if you focus on your relationship with the Lord, if you focus on knowing him more, if you don't forsake fellowship with other believers, if you spend time in prayer, spend time being taught, right? Whether it be reading your Bible and the word or letting a pastor preach to you, right? Your life is going to be so much better, right? You're going to have so much more joy, so much more satisfaction. You will never thirst ever again, right? And that's something that this morning when he was talking about not loving the world and, you know, loving God and having all these distractions, I was like, man, that's me. Like I have been so distracted by stuff that it is completely taken away from serving him. Right? I used to love doing YouTube. I used to love it. I used to wake up in the middle of the night with just all these thoughts of like videos and things that I wanted to talk about and preach about. And God would just be so consuming me, 
with his truth and his word. And I just got distracted. My heart, my affections went elsewhere. That bums me out. But you know what? When I heard that this morning, I was like, man, I got to get back on track. I got to get back on track. I cannot allow the devil to cause me to drift. Right? I cannot allow myself to choose to put my heart somewhere else where I will drift. Praying for you. Pray for me. Right? I love all my fellow believers. We're living in interesting times. Honestly, I'm not on social media anymore. I don't watch the news. I really don't know what's going on in the world, to be honest with you. I've been very focused on just my little family I got going on here. And uh, I'm just really focusing on my relationship with the Lord right now. And I encourage you to do the same as far as just focusing on your relationship with the Lord. Because there's nothing else more important. You are only going to find true joy and satisfaction and peace when you are close to the Lord. Hey, God bless you guys. And we'll see you guys next time.